This is your one and only Firespark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another exciting episode of Valheim This Old Longhouse where we rebuild the randomly generated structures that generate on your map. In this episode, we're gonna continue the rebuilding of our Draugr village that we've been working on. You can see we've made a ton of progress. If you would like to see all of the other stuff that we've done here, I have videos for all that. There is a playlist in the description. You can go down there and check it out. Start with episode one and see how we got to this point. So we're almost done with all the interiors. We just got a few more to do. We got this one here, this one there, that one, and that one there and uh, today we're gonna start with this one here I feel like this one here is just a little house just uh, you know they got their garden over here nothing too crazy and then uh, I feel like this belongs to this one so uh, we are going to just create a tiny little little quaint home in here we're gonna start off with some basic beds I feel like basic beds are the way to go for this structure it helps if I actually have the proper cheats active so that I can place this without a workbench. There we go. And then we will drop another one down. Actually, let's push them. Let's push them super close together and line them up here. Hold on. There we go. I like the way that looks. And of course, we're going to go with uh, chests at the base of the bed. I just like the way that the chests look. We'll do these little ones here. Little chest here at the base of each of these. And you know what? Actually, I changed my mind there. Let's give this an actual bed frame and then we'll put the chests. All right, there we go. That one took me a hot minute to get just right, but I like the way that looks with a little bit of bed frame going on there. And now what we're going to do is we are going to drop a chest right there and one right there as well. Okay, I like the way that that looks. Now let's get a little table in here. I don't know where exactly. I'm going to put this we got some dirt coming in through there and I think we should probably cover that up uh, I could flatten it but flattening now may mess up the outside so instead what we're going to do is just hide it so we're gonna push a table right in here like that we're gonna grab some chairs and let's put a chair over top of that one and let's make this chair pulled out a little bit more like so. And then this chair can be pushed against the wall like that. There we go. We got a nice little table set up going on there. We're going to need some lighting in here. And I think the best option for lighting is just to do one of these wall torches. We're going to place one of those in the back. Um, the smoke's not really going to vent through the back there, but it looks like it will. These don't really put off a whole ton of smoke anyway. And I think we're going to put one here in the... F Actually, no, I don't want one in the front. You know what I want to do? I want to put a trophy... Oop, I uh, don't want to do that. I want to put a trophy here in the front. So we are going to slip an slap an item stand down there. I don't know what trophy I'm going to put there yet, but we will figure out something. And after a little bit of work, the garden house is done. So I finally figured out what I was doing with these houses. I wasn't sure at first, but now I think I'm going to make them in theme of what they are. So this one has the garden next to it. So this is going to be the gardener. So obviously they're going to have like fresh veggies and berries and stuff all setting around. And uh, I added the sharpening stone and stuff like that because, you know, they're going to need to sharpen their gardening tools. Sure. Uh, this is supposed to represent gardening tools. I know it's not, but, eh, you know, it gets the job done for what I wanted it to do. We settled on the deer trophy there, and uh, overall, I think it's nice. We got a little uh, table back here with some stuff on it, a little bucket of carrots, a little bucket of berries. The table looks very active with random stuff going on, and, you know, I know one, one other change, one other thing that I want to add now that I think about it. There we go. Now we got some actual gardening tools there hanging out along with the other tools and uh i think it looks pretty good i like the way that it turned out all right so now we're going to move on to this house over here and this is going to be the butcher's house so obviously because they're going to have the well the pigs got deleted we'll have to spawn them back later but uh because the pigs are over here this one's going to be kind of like the butchery house so to start off with this one i think we're just going to have that bed's too too luxury uh, i wish there was like an intermediate bed between like this massive luxury bed and then this crappy little 
little bed. Uh, so we're gonna go with the crappy little bed here, I guess, because, you know, we don't really have a choice. There is no middle ground. We're gonna place down a rug there. Now, I want a bunch of, like, meat products, and one of the easiest things I know to do is, like, a hanging meat situation, and we can do that relative. Actually, you know what? Nah, that's too big. We'll use these. Uh, we can just place these down. Uh, let's see, where do I want these? Uh, yeah, you know what? Let's just put them here towards the middle. So we'll put one down like that. And I'm gonna overlap them ever so slightly to make them look like they're almost one structure. So like that. And then what we can do is you just delete the floor that they are on. We're gonna place a fire underneath both of them. Now, once you have the fire underneath of them, you can place the meat in them and then if you delete the fire fast enough the meat stays there so that's what we're gonna do that's like one of the few tricks that i know to get like a hanging meat type situation here so then we just go through and delete the fire like that and then we can put the floorboards back and it will look like we have hanging meat so that's a kind of just a cool little effect we can do here. Now, of course, we're also going to need a butchering table. So let's put down one of these. And I think I want the butcher table to go here in the back. I want it angled something like that. That looks pretty good there. And then let's put a little bit of meat on it. So we're going to grab one of these. Oh, really? I cannot do that? Really, game? I want meat on it. Oh, well, that's super annoying. I wonder if I can come up with some way to actually get meat on the butcher block. Okay, so I think I figured it out, but I had the butcher block placed in the wrong angle. I had the knife facing towards the back, which doesn't make any sense. It would be facing towards the front in a way. And honestly, this way looks the best because they would be standing here. They would be right-handed, slap the knife down with their right hand. We could do left-handed, but then the handle's facing kind of the wrong way, so... We'll pretend they are right-handed. So what we're going to do, we're going to push the butcher block up against the wall like that. Then we are going to grab a sign, make sure that the text is facing towards the back, and then we can kind of just hide it. You can't place the sign first because the butcher block has collision with everything that is over there. So we can just kind of hide the sign down inside the block like that. Ever so slightly. we got to get it just right. And then we want it just above like that so it creates a line there. And then we can place down. Which way is this stupid thing facing? I want the little divot facing the same way so that it kind of hides it a little bit. There we go. And then if we place one down, I can't attach it to that item. Don't tell me I can't attach it to that. Really? I can't attach the raw one? but I can attach the cooked one. Can I attach the raw one of those? This is becoming extremely frustrating. All right, so we went with the cooked lox meat. Uh, it looks a little raw-ish, not as raw as those, but eh, it gets the job done. There's meat on the butcher block. That is all I wanted. So there we go, that's how we can accomplish that. All right, so moving right along. And we need some type of table. But I don't know, I don't think I want to go for the same table that because I mean we could just smash a table here, but we kind of did that in the other one. And I just don't think I want to do the same thing. So I think what we're going to do, we're going to make a custom table. All right, so we have our little custom table made. I'm actually going to, for a change, push this chair all the way in because it's only going to be a single chair. And we are going to place down that just like that. We're not going to have any type of uh, food on this table. But I actually, you know what? I take that back. We are. We are going to have a loaf of bread. All right, there we go. I like the way that that looks. Now we need some lighting in this house. I think I'm going to keep the lighting relatively consistent with just a single torch in the back. And you know what? We should get a little bit of a different type of lighting in here. Let's put a small, let's put one of these in the back and we will get a yellow mushroom. And then we'll place a single yellow mushroom there back against the wall. Is that in the wall? No, that is not in the wall. Okay, yeah, I, I like the way that looks. Just kind of a 
simple little table for a dude or a lady that lives here alone that is just the lone butcher. We need something to kind of break up all of this blandness. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna delete that wall there and then we're gonna hold down shift so that we can place this without it snapping. And I want them, I want these to go straight through the wall. So I'm just gonna kind of line it up like that. And then once we have that done, then we should be able to just snap this wall back into place relatively easily like so. And let's just see what kind of texture this creates once we have these snapping through here. Um, that's a little off. I think I want that to come out just a little bit more. So we're gonna delete those and uh, reset this. And for some reason, that back part on that one still seems to be clipping through too far, but the rest of these actually look exactly the way that I want them to look. And I don't quite understand why that one is clipping the way that it is, but I think I've got a way to fix that and we'll take care of that here in a minute. So we are going to snap that in there and that should ensure, yep, that those are all green. All right, yeah, I like that. That just creates a little bit of extra, just a little bit of additional texture in there. Let's snap. Yeah, snap a few of those in there. Can we get one in that back? Will it actually snap or is the table gonna be in the way? I think the table's gonna cause too many issues back there, but that's fine. I like the way that that looks. It just adds a little bit of additional texture that isn't this that we always use. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing here on this other side. And overall, I think it turned out relatively well. We got the meat on the butcher block, which is what I freaking wanted. You should be able, the devs need to freaking, like we should be able to attach stuff to the crafting, like why can't we attach stuff to the crafting stations? Anyway, I think this build turned out relatively well, even though I had to do a little craziness to get it happen the way, some of the things that happen the way I want them. I like it, this looks like the home of a, you know, single person. So this one here is a little bit bigger than the other ones. Those are tiny, this one's big, it's got supports in it and everything else. And this is also our wheat processing facility. So this is going to be where the bread is made. So I wanna put an oven in here and I think what I wanna do, and it's gonna use up some of the space, but we're gonna delete those. And I wanna do something like this. We'll put an oven. I don't want it, I don't want to go on all the way like into the wall, but I want it really close. And then I want the next one snapping to it. And those are offset. So nope, we gotta we gotta line that up. So we're gonna line this up. All right, now that we have our three stoves all lined up and looking good, what we're gonna do is we're going to just block that off. So I wanna block it even. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna bring that to the edge here. So I'm just holding down shift so nothing snaps. We're gonna line that up like that. Yep, that looks good. Then we're gonna line one up in the middle like that and then do the same thing. You all get the idea of what's happening here. And then the same thing over here like so. Now we gotta hope I got all those close enough that this actually looks good when we start to place the additional pieces in. Okay, looking pretty good there. Now this back part here, we can actually completely close that off by snapping in a piece like that. Same thing over here. All right, now we need to come over here and this should snap down into there. Now, as you see there, we got a bit of an issue because that's gonna show up when we step in the front of these things. However, we're doing this for looks and I don't care about functionality. So if we actually step back and it's closed, you don't see that. We also have a situation where it's not perfectly lined up, but we can fix that. And there we go. So we've created a wall all the way across there like so. Now I know you're thinking, well, wouldn't that light the wood on fire if the oven gets hot enough? Sure, it probably would, but we don't care. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the proper slanted piece and wedge that in like so, and same thing over here like that. Now, I think what'll be cool is if we do something where this comes back a little bit. So let's grab our one by ones and do something like this to create like a shelf structure. So we're, we're hiding a chunk of this so it doesn't matter if it's not if it's not perfect like it is here. So now what we can do is we can grab a hold of this, attach that to the bottom of that one, and then we can create a new 
new structure here that's lined up to the grid a little bit more on that one side there and then we'll do the same thing over here and then when we place this they'll overlap each other like so and then we can come in here and start placing our wall pieces and this creates like a little shelf that we can stack a bunch of bread on top of and I think that'll look really neat like it's coming out of the oven and we're just stacking it on top we got an overlap up there at the top as well that creates like a cool little underlaying effect but anyway I like the way that that looks now what we're gonna do is we're going to grab our uh, this piece here and we're gonna fly so we can get up here if you can't fly I mean obviously just do whatever you need to uh, raise up off the ground and we are going to uh, well I think what we're gonna have to do is delete that and we're gonna take nope stop that take this across oh nope that's not gonna work either so let's start from the middle yeah you know that'll work that that works that works that's not gonna be super noticeable especially once we have a bunch of bread on top of it so now obviously in order to get to that top part we're gonna need some type of stairs type situation and I gotta think of how I want to do that something no mm, no maybe not maybe I got an even better idea okay I created a custom little stair thingy here in the middle so if we were to jump up here we would be able to reach the top now what we're gonna have to do is create a, another one over here and in order to do that I just held down shift and placed this in the middle offset ever so slightly like a uh, lag okay like you see here and then I looked at the back and sunk it into the other one as far as it would go just so that we could get a little bit of uh, additional girth on it like that and then we do the same thing on the front but we're looking at the back and then we just line it up same thing again we're just looking at the back and we eye it up and there we go so we got two little step stools to get up here to reach the bread i like the way this turned out this is just i went into this without any real idea of what i was going to do and that is looking really nice and just like that the bakery is complete so here we go we got full-on bakery we got some herbs just in case you need some herbs you want to make some herb bread something like that uh we got some fresh baked bread and some pies there and we're gonna lag a little bit more and uh look at that that looks i love the way that this whole thing turned out turns out turned out absolutely fantastic stuff for mixing up the dough of course we got a container here this would contain water in it uh, so that we can make the bread dough bucket big old pile of coal so that we can continuously feed the fires and a little extra spices or whatever back here on the shelf that i don't know what you need it for maybe something we got some place back there as well this didn't take a whole lot to do this is the main focal point of the whole thing and i think that turned out absolutely amazing i love the little inset back here that you can just like take the hot bread out toss it in up there i think this turned out absolutely fantastic and i think with that we are gonna wrap it up we got one more to do and then we got the final showcase we will do that in the next episode but i really like the way that this turned out i like the way that all of these turned out let me know what you guys think which one of these builds was your favorite the butcher shop the bakery or the little garden house over here personally i i'm a fan of the bakery it was the last one I did, and, and I know uh, it's always food with me, but I think the bakery turned out absolutely fantastic. I love the way that it looks. So let me know what you all think down there in the comment section. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload other Valheim content. And I don't just cover Valheim, I cover all kinds of different games, so you never know when I'm going to be making guides for a game that you may be playing. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider in that sub button. I want to get absolutely massive shout out and thank you to my supporters on Patreon for making making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to join my elite crew Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.